Okay, so let's explain to you guys myocardial action potentials. So here I'm trying to draw you like a graph that's showing the myocardial action potentials. So you can see here on the x-axis I have the time and on the y-axis I have the voltage that is being recorded in these cells that are found uh, in the heart, the muscular cells of the heart, often called myocytes. So uh, the resting membrane potential of these myocardial cells is around minus 90 millivolts. And then I'm going to go like from the resting membrane potential to the myocardial action potential itself. So in order to do that, I need to draw this curve here. So um, this is the, the, the shape of the curve of a myocardial action potential. You can see that we go like from around minus 90 millivolts uh, to all the way up to my plus 20 millivolts. And, and the different parts of the curve correspond, correspond to different phenomena. So we can go like really quick here like to this different phenomena. So the first thing we have it's a sodium inflow that promotes this spike on the on the action potential like the, the departure from the resting membrane potential which would be this baseline right here. So there's the sodium inflow followed by of course by um, a potassium outflow. As this potassium outflow is happening you also have some calcium moving in inside that myocardial cell and at the same time you have another like set of potassium channels that actually open and then bring the cell back to its resting membrane potentials. So that's the general picture. Let's go into more details right now. So in my part one of my curve here what exactly is happening is you have the opening of these fast voltage gated sodium channels and these fast voltage gated sodium channels when I say fast, it means that they're really fast and you have this huge spike um, on the voltage of the cell and, and this causes a depolarization. The cell becomes less polar with the inflow of positive charges such as sodium. The next part that we're going to have here is what I call like the part 2A. I'm going to divide like part, uh, um, the, the next like segment of the curve into two segments known as 2A and 2B. Books bring it differently. Some people bring it like in four steps, some people bring it in five steps, some people bring it into three steps, but it doesn't matter. The idea here is to get the point. So in this second step here, you have this voltage gated like potassium channels that initiate the repolarization, that try to bring that cell back to its resting membrane potential. These potassium um, ions are leaving the cell Therefore, you have the cell becoming repolarized. Re At the same time that this is happening, you actually have like this slow voltage gated calcium channels that delay the depolarization of that cell. We call this phase as the plateau phase because it, you can see from the graph that it reaches a plateau. And it's happening at the same time that the, cell, the, the potassium channels are opening, but because they are actually adding positive charges adding positive charges to the cell, they will delay depolarization. Of course, the next step then is my step number three of the curve here. And this step is when you actually have the inactivation of the calcium channels, the potassium outflow will actually finish the repolarization. After that point, obviously, you go to the return. We have the cell returning to the resting membrane potential. You, you perhaps you can click on the link um, for my other video on resting membrane potential if you don't have that concept fresh in your mind. So this seems to be like relatively simple, right? But I can actually add more to the to the myocardial action potentials. I can talk about the absolute refractory period, which is this period in which the cell has to go through before another action potential can be um, established. So it's a refractory period and it's called absolute because no matter what you do with that cell in that period of time, no action potential will develop. So the absolute refractory period is almost as long as the, my actual, the myocardial action potential itself. So what that determines is that subsequent depolarization is limited by this plateau phase. It's limited by the absolute refractory period. Um, so one thing you can actually ask yourself at this point is why do myocardial cells need such long refractory period? 
you have to think about the consequences of that, right? So I'll give you some time to think about it. Not much, because we don't have much time to waste here in this podcast. But perhaps some of you thought that this is a protective mechanism. And if you think, if you thought of that, you were probably right. What is happening here, I would add to, to this information, is that this plateau phase that establishes the absolute refractory period makes it impossible to summate action potentials, meaning that you have to grant this period of time in which no action potentials can be further developed because there's a calcium inflow and depolarization of that cell. It's like really hard and you have to grant that period of time. The consequence of this is that granting this refractory period prevents sustained tension. You do not want your cardiac cells to remain on a sustained state of tension because you need the heart to beat at a constant pace or a, or a, or a certain pace. You don't want those uh, muscle cells to latch um, to a prolonged state of tension in which like the heart will not be pumping blood. This sustained t- um, tension, for some of you already know that, is called tetanus. And you do not want your heart, uh, your myocardial cells, to go into tetany. Because if they go into tetany, that means that your heart is not um, having like subsequent beats and blood's not being pumped out of the heart. So I hope this gives you a better idea of the myocardial action potentials. It's a quick video, but I think like if you uh, read all the steps, you can like make it more sense in your head. So I hope it helps. Thank you.